uh, so cops, like in the back, we prettied up the warehouse and then put a like a little porch porta, porta, porta coat thing on it. And that's where they're going to put their like in the late lawn and garden center. So and then the in between a sports car, the warehouse and, and kind of the other parking lot unit is going to be a big greenhouse and, and it's going to be a lawn and garden center. They had a, a car as well. But the very we front, driving around <laughs> <in the> community, <laughs> but the very front where we cleaned up all the family eventually we put a building in there i just don't know what's like it was i think it's just you was an amazing community girl well it's for housing even though we didn't really need it um i think just a little there from storefront office something simple very good this is people yeah oh yes where I went. There you go. There you go. <laughs> we could we could do that. You know, it's we built those things. But honestly, we just uh, all right. You know, we're looking at a building tomorrow. We got a gavel. I do. I hate to interrupt. It's good social time, but it is seven p.m. and I'll call this meeting of the Barry City Council to order on this Tuesday, November first, twenty twenty-two. At 7 p.m., uh, city councilors present tonight include uh, Councilor Tom Logan, Councilor Sam Stockwell, Councilor Teddy Wazizak, Councilor Michael Booten, Councilor Mel Sean Bell, and Councilor Michael Deering. Staff joining us tonight. We have uh, City Manager Charlie Castro, Clerk Treasurer Dawes. Uh, we have Jeff Bergeron, uh, Janet Chetney, Stephanie, and uh, is there anybody else? Don. 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 Don's online. And so, welcome everybody. Um, this meeting has been uh, publicly posted. There are agendas available in the back of the room and online. This is being recorded and broadcast and subject to Vermont's open meeting law and the council's rules and procedures, which are available online. I'd like to offer a warm welcome to all the guests joining us uh, here in person and online. And if you're joining us online, please keep in mind that the chat function should only be used for technical issues or difficulties. The city offers online access as a convenience and we'll continue the meeting if any technical difficulties occur. If you would like to be recognized, please raise your hand or signal that you would like to be uh, to speak. And those in the room should come to the front table here at the microphone. Um, I'll call on speakers in order, calling on those who haven't uh, spoken yet to speak first and limiting time if necessary to do the city's business. Uh, please state your name for the record and speak in the microphone so everybody can hear you. I wanna thank everybody in advance for participating in a civil uh, and respectful manner. And if you have any questions about process or procedure, please ask and we'll get it sorted. That takes us to adjustments to the agenda. Uh, Manager Stroh Castro. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Yeah. Uh, one adjustment requested uh, a new consent item 4F, which would be an authorization to execute a contract with the uh, Barry Rotary Club for use of the second floor of the Wheelock House uh, through May 31st. Same terms at the same terms as their prior uh, lease. Uh, so that's item F. Are there any other changes from council? Right. Hearing and seeing none, that takes us to visitors and communication. This is an opportunity to speak to an item um, that is not on the agenda tonight. <laughs> seeing none online. Seeing and hearing none, that takes us to the consent agenda. We have um, several items. We have approval of the minutes of the special city council meeting of October 25th, 2022. Approval of the minutes of the regular city council meeting of October 25th, 2022. Approval of the warrants from the week of Wednesday, November 2nd, 2022. Uh, are there any? <clears throat> no, no licenses or permits. We have ratification of authorization for the city manager to execute the Wheelock House lease extension, as well as the authorization to execute the extension for the rotary through May 31st in the same location. Is there a motion? So moved. Motion by Councilor Wazizak. Second. Second by Councilor Deering. Is there any further discussion on the consent agenda? Any comments from the public? All right. Hearing and seeing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. The consent agenda is adopted. That takes us to item five on the agenda the city clerk and treasurer's report. Mr. Mayor. Here. Touching. I was looking for it. <laughs> Sign the warrants. 
Um, let's see, a few things. Uh, we're exactly one week away from uh, the general election. As a matter of fact, at this time in seven days, it'll be over. So <laughs> there's that. So um, we have just want to give you some numbers. Um, we have mailed out uh, 4,699 ballots. Um, we have received back 1,496, <laughs> I rounded them up for 4,700 out and 1,500 back. Um, and we also have received a bunch back uh, as undeliverable because of people moving and changes of address. We've got uh, 349 of those that have come back undeliverable. Um, we're actually keeping them um, handy because what we're finding is that there are some that have been uh, returned to us as undeliverable where people are still here and still at that address, but the, um, the mailing didn't include an apartment number. So what we're doing is we're getting phone calls from people or people stopping by saying, hey, I should have gotten a ballot. And if we're able to find their ballot in that um, that tray, then we're able to uh, reissue it to the to the voter. So so that's been nice to be able to do that. Um, the it, it's not too late to request an absentee <clears throat> ballot. Uh, we're still mailing absentee ballots to new voters as they are registering here in Barry City. We are getting close to the time where probably at the time where um, it uh, it might be difficult to mail the ballot to the voter and get it back by mail. Uh, but of course, we do have the drop boxes, uh, one on the front of City Hall, one behind City Hall, and people can bring their ballots to the polls uh, next Tuesday. Um, you can also have somebody else bring the ballot either in here or to the polls. Uh, that is certainly acceptable. Um, you can also bring your ballot to the polls and vote it at the polls and feed it into the tabulator. So there's lots of different options for, um, for getting your ballots to the polls. I sent something out on Front Porch Forum last week just to let people know what the different options are. So the Board of Civil Authority is meeting this Thursday at six o'clock here um, to uh, for the typical pre-election meeting. Um, and in addition to approving election workers, we're going to review our election procedures to just make sure that, um, that we're uh, we're solid on what the rules are for the polling place so that we can provide um, updated information to, um, to people who are up there campaigning or poll watching or whatever it might be. We wanna make sure that, uh, that everybody understands what the, what the procedures are um, that are allowed. And uh, I wanna let people know that the winter parking ban goes into effect on the 15th as, the manager crosses that off his list. <laughs> um, what that means is it goes into effect at 12.01 a.m. on the 15th. This is something we went back and forth with for a while. But we wanted to make sure that everybody understands that's when the 15th starts. So it goes into effect on November 15th. Um, the, the police department is really good about issuing um, notices uh, for the week leading up to it and then for the first week. Um, so that people uh, understand what's going on. We do also spread the word through our website and Facebook and Front Porch Forum. And so, um, but we want people to understand that once the winter parking ban is in effect, that means that you can't park on the city streets or in the city parking lots from 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. Um, until April 1st. So it's in effect until April 1st. Um, and this is to make sure that the um, public works department can deal with uh, snow events during the winter when they have to plow and keep roadways open enough for emergency vehicles, et cetera. So um, I think that's everything that I've got. Thank you. Are there any questions for the clerk, treasurer? All right. Hearing and seeing none, that takes us to uh, the Liquor Control Cannabis Control Board. And tonight we have two uh, licenses from Director Chetney uh, for manufacturing, right? So. We have one oh, from one. me. Or one, I'm sorry, one license. Yep. Class one, two license. One, <laughs> one from, from one. me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, the actually the the zoning license was included in the zoning report um, for Green Mountain Hash. Uh, they've been issued their zoning um, license. 
Um, and now the, sorry, their zoning permit, and they are in front of you this evening for um, their uh, manufacturer tier two license. Um, it, because there is a 15 day waiting period with a zoning permit, um, but I, but we're, we're not meeting, council isn't meeting next week, and then the following meeting on the 15th is, is a different format. I didn't want to hold them up. So what my um, suggestion to the council is going to be approval um, and the approval going into effect at the end of the 15 day waiting period, which will be next week. So we do have, I believe, representatives here from, um, from Green Mountain Hash. They were going to zoom in. So I'm Ooh, waiting to... And, and, <laughs> and <laughs> Councillor Lozon is sneaking out. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> so who do we have for from Green Mountain Hash on the Zoom? Uh, that would be me, go. Justin. <laughs> Hi, Justin. Hi, Carolyn. Thank you for your correspondence earlier. Sure. Um, this is an opportunity part of the, the council's process with um, liquor or cannabis licenses is to invite new license holders to come uh, meet the council, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your business um, before they consider the, um, the application. So have at it. Okay. Um, so our company is fairly small. Um, it's myself, my business partner, Adam, and my wife, Hope. Um, I run the manufacturing aspect of it, um, and they take over the uh, administrative and marketing aspects of the business. Um, the business itself is mostly a tolling venture. Um, our plan is to be processing, um, in the majority, outdoor crops uh, for growers in the um, two to three tier area. Um, in order to make products for themselves in a solventless manner. Um, we specifically do solventless and mechanical processing. Um, one, because we believe it creates a superior, high quality, more enjoyable product. Um, and two, uh, the methods used to do so are far more environmentally friendly, or at least can be tailored towards uh, environmentally friendly. Thank you for the introduction. Are there any questions from the council? Council Booten. Um, So it's, again, I'm going to abstain from it, but the, the question that I have is regarding the smell. Um, I assume you're going to have the same precautions as the last person? Yes, we do have the same precautions as we are in the same yeah. location. Um, as well as the process itself, is based around preserving those aromatic and flavorful compounds that you would smell. Um, so it, it, the process is meant to keep those contained and out of people's noses until the point of sale. Okay. Oh, Councilor Deering. <clears throat> Are you guys working with the other establishment that's in town as well? Yes, Forbin's Finest, unless there's another I'm unaware of. Okay. Uh, and my second question is, uh, you said that you could potentially be using uh, better earth friendly procedures. Um, is that something that you guys are going to be doing? Or is that something that you're looking at doing? Uh, it's something we have to work individually farmer to farmer. Um, what I'm referring to specifically is our solvent, quote unquote, water. Okay. Um, at the end of its usage essentially becomes a very complex nutrient plant tea. Um, and if the logistics can be figured out from farmer to farmer, or, or at the very least with the building we're in with, um, it can be used as a very potent fertilizer, uh, reducing carbon impact and also reusing that water one more time. And I guess my question is, is that something that you guys are gonna be doing at the facility in Barrie? Uh, not immediately, but it's our in our uh, action plan to do so. That that's something I'm working on specifically. In the meantime, we're working with rainwater to reduce our impact. Got no more questions. Thank you. Thank you. No questions here. Well, thank you for the introduction. And just for the record, Council those on your uh, recusing as because of a conflict of interest in this case. I've never met him, but yeah, sure. Okay, but. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, are you? You're going to be the landlord, right? Yeah. The, so. the process is occurring at a facility that we are okay. care of. All right. Yeah. Well, thank okay. you for doing that. Can I ask one more question, Councilor? So, it, the products that you guys are going to be producing are they going to be the products that are going to be sold at the next? I'm assuming that, that somebody's going to be coming to us to say, "Hey, we'd like to retail uh, sell cannabis and these products." Um, is that you know what's going to be down the you know down the line with this product? Uh, I'm not entirely sure I understand the question. Okay, so you guys are working with the other individual in town. Um, yes. The grower, and you guys are the manufacturer, um, correct? Yes. Of the pro from the product. So then the product will be sold at a dispensary that I've been heard in the community that will be located at, at L&M Diner. Um, That's a separate. Is that a, okay. So I wasn't sure. Yeah if that was all going to be, you know, cause I didn't understand at first that number one, the, the last application we approved was also working with this applicant as well. Um, not that I have a problem with that, but I, I just, out of transparency, I'm curious, you know, cause I know that down the road, we are going to be looking at uh, a facility where there will be retail cannabis being sold. Um, so I'm just asking the questions. Well, and just you. for point of process, the retail is a completely separate license that Correct. will have to come back before the council anyway, Correct. right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's what I thought. The so, bureaucracy. So there's a zoning permit that's issued. It's in a it's in the appeal period. Uh, the recommended motion is to uh condition the license upon or, or make the license uh, or our approval as a body yeah. effective upon in are in tandem with the expiration of the appeal period for the zoning permit? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Still moved. Second. second. Motion by Councilor Wadzlock, second by Councilor Deering to approve the manufacturing license. Is there any further discussion? Hearing and seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Stain. One abstention noted. And uh, Justin, thank you for coming in. Thank you very much. And investing in Barry. You're very so, welcome. So Happy Justin, to. I will be um, uh, sending the approval notification to the Vermont Cannabis Control Board um, after the zoning permit window has closed. So next Wednesday, I think, because Tuesday's the election and I'm going to be busy. So it'll probably <laughs> be next Wednesday. So, and I will see. Best of luck. <laughs> yeah, I will see see uh, uh, notification to you, to you. So. All right. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Thank you. Thanks. That takes us to item seven on the agenda, the city manager's report. Thanks, Mayor. A um, couple items uh, to supplement the department head reports. Just uh, we uh, this afternoon had to issue a boil water advisory for the city of Barrie. Um, we pushed this out through social media. It's on our website. Uh, we did a VT alerts uh, happened around 2 p.m. So um, if uh, in, in, in City of Barrie, boil your water uh, before drinking it. Uh, there's two, as I said, two water main breaks. One is on Circle and Hale Street. Crews are still working there right now. Stopped there before coming in and they're working hard trying to get to the bottom of the problem. The other on Summer, and, uh, Summer Street and Keith Avenue and uh, I believe they're starting to work on repairs. So that one is, is starting to get addressed. Uh, so folks will see some increase in color in their water. And uh, there are residences that have had full shutoffs um, as well. So we will uh, keep all our platforms updated um, for when um, the advisory is lifted. Um, and uh, just item number two is uh, great events uh, this weekend uh, for trick-or-treaters, uh, the parade, the, the Main Street trick-or-treating, um, great crowds. Um, we did have just unfortunately one, one incident with an 11-year-old child uh, who was struck on, on North uh, Main and Seminary that some folks may have heard about. Um, child was treated. Uh, so I want to thank uh, our, our first responders, police, fire, uh, were able to treat the child very quickly. Um, and thankfully, the child uh, sustained, I think, only minor injuries and was taken to uh, the medical uh, Central Vermont Medical Center just as a precaution. So um, just a reminder uh, for as we, you know, uh, prepare for next year for, the, for events and activities and trick-or-treaters to keep them safe. Um, but Luckily, a, a tragedy was avoided here. Otherwise, they were wonderful events. Lots of lots of kids out um, yesterday. 
Um, so I want to thank Tracy for the events. They were wonderful. Uh, I had two participants in my home that enjoyed all of them. So uh, thank you for all that work to do, put those together. Um, the clerk took my uh, parking ban note, so I will uh, skip that one. Um, and uh, just a reminder, we do not, uh, uh, part of the reason I wanted to talk about is because we don't have a council meeting next week, uh, which I believe uh, Carol may have mentioned. Um, and the 15th, uh, going on to the, the last item to update, um, will be a joint uh, council meeting slash ARPA engagement forum. Um, so very excited about that. That will, both events will be happening at Alumni Hall. Um, and so um, we uh, just ARPA engagement update overall um, is we uh, asking for letters of interest due tomorrow if they trickle in a little bit after that we'll do our best to include them in the survey but really the due date for tomorrow was so that we could incorporate um, concepts ideas from those letters of interest into the survey we will do the best we can for anything that trickles afterwards we, we just can't make promises on it um, and please I, I hope I wonder if people are just waiting for the last possible minute. We've only we've received less than ten, so um, please get those in if you're working on them. Um, the survey um, will go live on um, Wednesday, the 9th, uh, November 9th, on our website. Um, we'll also get that out through our all our social media platforms. Um, we will be handing out some uh, a flyer for it at our uh, at the election, pending approval of the Board of Civil Authority for that material, just to get the word out. Um, and so um, that will go live on the 9th. It'll be open till December 7th. And as I mentioned, forum um, on the 15th um, at Alumni Hall, that's Tuesday. Uh, and we will have a council meeting, I'm hoping at 6 p.m. or so, and uh, looking to start the forum around 6.30 but we will make sure that that information is on the flyer and our social media platforms, but that is the, the target at the moment. So that is it for me. Great, thank you. Any questions for manager? Councilor Walsh? Yeah, just a logistical question. So your uh, run of show, for lack of a better term, for the 15th would be 6 to 6.30, just get through the city business, yes. get the warrants and stuff, and then exactly. 6.30. Okay, yep, just making sure I understand. Yep. Just with regard to the water main breaks, are there a lot of areas that are without water pressure right now? Um, there, there were growing areas because they try to locate the issue. They've had to shut off um, uh, water for more and more houses. So I don't have a, a number from Bill, but I know that unfortunately that number kept creeping up as they were trying to locate the, the issue, the source of the issue. Yeah. Do they know how long there will be no water pressure? Bill was is hopeful, assuming that um, the issue can be identified on Circle and Hill Street, that uh, they'll have to do testing. They have to do two rounds of testing tomorrow, get mm -hmm. two clearances of that. Um, so it may be late tomorrow that yeah, we for the lift boil, it for the boil. But yeah. the, the water pressure. The only reason being this time of year, heating systems depend yeah. on pressure to function without what if, there, if it's a you know, water heating system, it requires pressure or it won't function. I, I believe that the hope is to have that up before the advisory is lifted, but I will, um, I'd have to ask Bill for the specifics okay. on it. Thank you. Yep. I spoke with, with Bill about it because I live in that neighborhood. Um, <laughs> and one of the, one of the issues that's making it uh, a little more complicated and making it more urgent and why they're really working to get it fixed is that they're not able to do a sort of a shut off to isolate the area that needs to be repaired. Um, and that's why it's more broadly spread yep. for the, the area that's gotcha. actually out. Um, but they're, they're working on it hard to get it fixed as soon as possible. Oh, and just a public service announcement. A friend of mine was gloating that, uh, that there's no boil water notice in Berrytown. And I looked at him and I'm like, what? Mm. I'm like, it's the same system. <laughs> so it does affect Berrytown, correct? I mean, there are private, right. there are private districts yeah. within Berrytown that actually service small neighborhoods. But chances are, if you live in the Traw Hill, Traw Hill area, it's the same water. Or Beckley Hill, <laughs> or yeah, it's yeah. Mm -hmm. And I do know that. Um, occasionally we sell water to Barrytown 
and then they disperse it through however they do it. So those people could be, should be under that as well, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, yeah. I think that even if you don't get a bill from Barry City, you might want to double check that. And we try to, cra I know the uh, water department is trying to craft the, the VT alerts to be broader than our just yeah. out of abundance of caution for that reason. Yeah. Councilor Deering. Just one question about the accident, about the Halloween. Was there a parent involved in the accident as well, or was it just the child? I'd heard that there was a parent and the child. I'm only aware of the child. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Councilor Stockwell. When the water main breaks, do we, is it predictable in some ways? Like, is it the oldest ones first, or is there, are there other factors and we can never predict which thing is going to break next? You know, Bill's would be the best person to answer that. Um, I think what happened today was uh, related to some of the flushing activities that were going on. So I don't know that that would have impacted the the age of the infrastructure wouldn't have had a direct impact today. Um, just from what I've tried to absorb from from talking to Bill about some of the issues we've faced that it, it can be uh, certainly the age contributes to some of it. Um, I know that. Um, for example, some sometimes it's you know something it's a matter of a tree root growing into the into the pipes. So it's I think it's a little bit of everything today. Today wasn't specifically related to the age itself. Thank you. Yep. If there are no further questions, that takes us to uh, our first item of new business, which is holiday free parking request from uh, the Barry Partnership uh, delivered to us from the manager and at the request of. Tracy Lewis, Director of the Berry Partnership. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, so yes, I put in a request for uh, free parking for the holiday season uh, beginning on Thanksgiving to go through the new year. Uh, we do this, we request it every year and um, I think donations can go to a um, an organization that the city council chooses. Um, Last year, I suggested the Berry Garden Club, and this year, I would like to request it to go to the Renita Marshall Helping Hands Foundation because they do a lot of good work for for Barry and and the kids in our area. So, um, I guess we need uh, we 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 have to adopt a first motion on the. Um, well, first, if you have any questions, yeah, yeah. yeah Does anybody any have questions? So moved. Second. All right, so there's a motion to approve the parking, um, uh, free parking from Thanksgiving to the New Year's. Is there any further discussion on that one? Do we want to add in there the suggestion? Uh, I was going to split the questions. Um, normally, okay. the council has uh, made nominations, uh, at least in my past three years, or uh, okay. the councils. And I, I think uh, last year, the first year we did. Okay, you yeah. don't have to explain. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, we did the food bank one year. We yeah. did recreation programs one year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I know uh, Clerk Dawes has suggested the um, supporting the um, uh, heat assistance, emergency heat and fuel assistance, given the high prices of, of fuel costs this year. And Capstone yeah, it, runs a program like Right, that. right. We talked last week about right. um, the, doing a, um, a distribution from the Keith Fund, which mm -hmm. I will bring to whatever the meeting after the 15th is, 22nd. 29th. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. Well, oh, right. Yeah, okay. So the 29th, <laughs> I'll bring a request to the to that meeting. So. I'd be happy to do the stickers again. Okay. Just let me know when you have them. All right. I'd like to help as well if possible. Thank you very much. So so there's at least a motion and a second to approve the free parking. Um, is there any further discussion on that question? The only thing that I would say is that um, Tracy's letter said uh, through January 1st, but actually the legal holiday is January 2, because that's the the Monday. Okay. So I would say that it would be through the, the Monday. So it would be, so the free parking would be through the second. So. That's great. Thank you, Carol. All right. So all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. And so are there nominations for... Uh, uh, beneficiary organizations for the uh, for the parking fees that would be paid. Sure, I'll make a motion for um, and nominations, or I can make a motion. Yeah, I, I guess, mean, yeah. 
make a motion to go with uh, Renita, helping hands. Renita, Renita Marshall, she's going to kill me. Jesus. I know. <laughs> Renita Marshall's uh, helping foundation, hands helping hands. Wow, I, that's Renita amazing. Marshall, well, help helping hands you. foundation. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> wow, that was. Is she online? <laughs> she is not. There's another thing I stuck in to, uh, to all proceeds go to the Renita Marshall Helping Hands Foundation. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, I'm a nay. Ayes have it. The motion passes. Thank but you very much. Yep. That takes us to FY24, the budget. Hey, Tracy, just one second. Uh, have a seat. <laughs> Social media was a uh, little tough on you mm -hmm. this morning, and I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Um, that incident. Um, I had to go to the bank while the trick-or-treaters were, uh, you know, running about. And I got down to the bank and I had forgotten my deposit. So I had to go back home and go back. So I went through four times in the span of uh, 20 minutes. You know, the parents were attentive. I mean, kids are kids. They were excited. Parents were attentive. The, you know, um, certainly couldn't have offered any improvements. And it's not lost on me that as I, I didn't know where the incident had occurred, but as I read all of the unfair comments on social media, it made it sound like it was right in the middle of downtown. And it in fact wasn't. Correct. And they said, you know, the city should have shut down the, the main street and the police officers should have done better and you should have done better and I should have done better and the mayor should have done and everybody should have done better. But it made it sound like the incident happened where the trick-or-treating occurs which is you know generally now i'm dating myself because i don't know what bank it is now where chittenden bank used to be <laughs> down you know to the cornerstone and that's generally where the activities are occurring and that unfortunate accident and i'm thrilled that the child is is going to be okay happened way up by seminary street by bud's entire rk miles um it was seminary street correct yes right near key bank Oh, by Key Bank. Okay, yeah, so Key not Bank. quite that yeah. far up, but not not yeah. where those activities are normally occurring. Yeah, there is some trick or treating that still happens down there, and we're aware of that. Uh, but it wasn't up in the the main area. And when we do have a request to shut down the streets, my understanding is we usually just go to Granite Street so that the flow of traffic on the back streets can continue. So. Um, the streets wouldn't have been shut down mm -hmm. to where the incident was. But anyway. you know, I, I know how hard you work. Thank you. You know, and I know how much that must bother you. you yes, know, I thankfully I when, you know, drove down there as soon as I heard and and made sure things that, happen. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've had had accidents. We've all had accidents that are unfortunate. And you know, hindsight is always 2020. So I, I you know, again, I just I felt badly because there are always people who use social media as their own personal personal bashing grounds, and I don't like it. Yeah. And I don't like the way you were treated and your organization was treated because I know how hard you work. Yeah. So Thank you. I just wanted you to know that. Thank you. All right. I'm just glad that the, the boy is, is safe. Yeah, and, and since Mayor Jane's here, I figured I'd ask, how long have we been doing this? So for those that couldn't hear, 30 years. And how many incidents have we had? 30 years each yeah. year. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Well, and I think now is the time that we can discuss and, mm. and talk about future events and how we can make it safer. So I think that's what we're going to do and, and go from there. So um, thank, thank you. you very much. I was just going to. And as a as one who's done it myself, cars come at you sometimes at breakneck speed, yeah. even though you're standing in the middle of the road, and you can't control that. And so we try. We've had in the past we've had the junior ROTC down here helping. We've had knowledge cadets helping. We've had merchants helping. We've had parents helping. I mean, we try every year to get the crosswalks mm -hmm. covered. Yep. Um, and it's daunting to get that many volunteers, but we have a lot of people who are there. And we are watching the crosswalks and aware of that there are a thousand kids on our main street here. Um, so I just want to make you aware of that. But we do have volunteers who come down and yeah. help us. And for those that are listening online, I don't know if you heard, but they do have volunteers that that uh, participate and help with crossing. So thank you. And that's thank all you. organized by volunt. Well, and, and Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. I just wanted to add to that as a father of four that all four of my children went down. We had a great safe event. I did a couple of live feeds uh, on Facebook, got to see uh, Mary Jane and got to see you, Tracy, mm -hmm. and, and really a, a lot of different business owners in our community uh, mm -hmm. came together just to have fun for our community yeah. and to see that, to see that blessing right there. That's yeah, just, that's what community is about. So thank you really for, for everything that you put into that and that you continue to put into the partnership. Thank you. And if if you haven't checked out on social media, I did a little bit of a reel from yesterday's events and and it came out pretty good. So check it out. Yeah. Thank you guys. Good post. Yeah, I saw the post for, that you shared on your page, the Wabi Jewelry page of all the kids in front of the statue. Really cool to see. Thank you. All right, so uh, so we're gonna definitely have uh, more more safety focus uh, next year in terms of communication ahead of time. Yeah, we're going to North Seminary. That's insane. I wasn't listening. So that takes us to the FY24 uh, department budget reviews. We're gonna start with uh, planning, permitting, assessing, go to buildings and community services, and end with the recreation yep. department, right? Bang, boom. So, so if I, uh, I'll just set the table a little bit. Uh, while Janet gets ready, um, she'll be doing uh, similar to what uh, Chief Vail, Interim Chief Allsworth did uh, last week, <clears throat> going through um, high level presentation of the highlights of uh, major components of the budget. Um, we did provide the line by line. So Janet, myself, Don, Don Line are able to uh, answer those questions as well. But we're, uh, Janet will be focusing on sort of the, the high level overview for you. Hi, Mayor. Janet. Hi, Counselors. Hi, Janet. Hi. Uh, my presentation is pretty straightforward. As you know, I'm a, a fairly small but integral part of the city. Um, Hope to, if you could go to the next slide. That's what I aspire to have. Is all this stuff, <laughs> right? So um, right now it's Catherine and myself. Um, our uh, call centers are listed. So if you're ever you know, right in the weeds in the budget, you'll know exactly where to go. Um, let's start with assessing. As I said on the slide that um, we, we have a very minimal increase with uh, the assessing budget from 23 to 24 proposed, uh, a 0.4% increase. And that's essentially, um, I think, attributed to salary adjustments. With the roll-ups that the manager and the finance director have um, completed for all, both my departments, it makes it easier to focus on um, you know, the, the meat of my budgets. Uh, my next slide is just some, a lot of people don't know what assessing is and what it does. And you know, the big bad assessor says no half the time. So it runs the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to give you a bullet list of the kind of things that come out of the assessing arm of my office. Um, it's just an FYI. I think it's important that, that folks understand what it is that 
that uh, we do and the deadlines that we have and how we get to a grand list and how it's built. And then the myriad of deadlines from April 1 to August 1 that occur. Um, so that was my assessing services 101 for you folks. So if you haven't had the time to read it, I highly suggest, you know, reading each of my bullet points so you understand what happens in my office. And the next, so if you go to the fun facts, I thought that might um, be helpful that uh, some people don't know how to read a property tax bill. The tax department actually has uh, a little, um, I don't think it's a PDF. I think it's an actual little presentation on how to understand your property tax bill. What does a homestead mean? What does the house site mean? What does this formula mean? And I thought it was really important to uh, put that out there so people see that, um, you know, even the tax department is always trying to educate the general public on, on your taxes and your tax bills and what it all means. So, and statistics, um, you can't really tell because um, these are really finite, tiny little graphs. Um, but it really boils down to what I wanted to show was property sales. Sales have been consistently high now for two and a half years. They are generally starting to slow down. Um, but I can tell when my assessing clerk, Catherine Brayman, puts together the property transfer list monthly, and she tells me how many pages it is, and she just told me October's ending with almost four pages. That means there were a lot of sales in the city. And I think that will continue even with the interest rates to climb. Um, so the upper left-hand um, chart, the, the tallest number represents act, the actual number of sales, while the little, the little shows you know, broken down by um, different types of homes. And then the property sales by number, it's, it's not really necessarily a chart. You can actually take the tops and draw a line across, but at least it shows based on the hundreds of thousands of dollars where Barry City is at year to year. And it, you can see how it ebbs and flows given the, um, our economy and what's happening. And if anyone is following along online and these numbers seem really small, this is all on the city website and you can zoom in on it. Thank you. Um, any questions for me on the assessing budget? If you've all had a chance to go line by line, it was is pretty minimal changes. Okay, moving on. Planning permitting. Uh, a very minor increase in budget. Uh, I gave up some things in my endeavor to um, participate in um, a, a healthy budget discussion at our budget congress. Um, we had an increase, but that's because I have two unfilled positions, one of which is a brand new position. And we had to look at what salaries may, excuse me, may be required for FY24. Um, again, uh, mostly uh, the increase is mostly attributed to salaries. Um, I gave up some of, as you'll see in the line by line, um, I reduced some things and um, we've increased some things. So we continue to maintain and be attractive to future candidates to Barry City. And just like with assessing, I came up with some, you know, little bullet points that says this is, this is some, not all, of the things that comes out of my office. Um, and then I, I did some more visuals for you. If you go to permitting statistics and fun facts, uh, it shows you permits year by year. The, if you look at the upper left, those are your total permits. That's the line at the top broken down by individual types of permits in the bar graph below. And on the right-hand side, uh, those are fees collected year over year based on the type of permit. Mm -hmm. So. Just noting that it's great to see that vacant building fee number going down. It is, it is. Uh, department review, next slide, uh, actually shows what uh, overall, we, the, uh, the give and the take and where we landed between the two departments in my office. Mm -hmm.
Any questions? Councilor Deering. How can we get those positions filled for you? We are working on that. I actually received an application from the HR manager that he received on Friday. Uh, so we are setting up an interview for a permit administrator position. We'll, uh, we'll feel that one out and see how that goes. And um, the city manager, bless his heart, has resurrected a conversation with our um, consultant that's going to be doing our reappraisal uh, to see if they are willing to work in their schedule to help us out. When we first talked to them two years ago, they, it was an adamant no, they didn't have the time. Um, the door is opened a little bit. So um, we'll see what happens and the manager will keep us all apprised of his, his progress. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm really hoping that, um, that we get something there. Uh, I, you know, and, and, and Janet knows this, it won't be the entirety of the assessment <clears throat> services that we need, but if it's, you know, four hours a week, eight hours a week, whatever it is, it's four more hours that uh, that Janet doesn't have to put into that work and helps us and helps the office. So um, helps the grand list. Exactly. Yeah. Any questions? Janet, I had a question about, it's more of an operational question. I was just curious. So with, with uh, the sale volume up and sale prices up, how does that how does that get into the the grand list when one of those property transfer tax cards come in does the listers card get updated at that point um or is there like a lag between those two things so it gets updated with the basics right yeah but i am not equipped nor trained to revise anything at this point yeah if i yeah. was um most certainly we could be taking sales and increasing people's assessment based on the sale alone. Uh, but I guess it's very complicated and uh, I'm not at the point where I'm ready to jump into that yet. If we continue in the next year and a half, two years, and we still don't have anybody fully in the seat. Um, I Toy with the idea of learning <laughs> more learning more so but for now um we're limping along and on uh training and development travel and meals dues and membership um those all are pretty lean yeah. and you're expecting to bring on new staff who may have training needs uh do you think that's adequate to both attract uh or maybe for the man, a question for the manager is that adequate to attract um a, a new planner and then uh, support their training needs um it, it's certainly not the level of training development we want i mean I, and i think that's that would be across the board i mean that's one right. of the that's one of the areas that every department took a hit on because um we're at the point where so many of the um the areas where we can work around are, are the margins and so um, this is one of those sort of non-discretionary areas where we had to um, make judgments and I think what um, what I would say my my strategy would be is that if we do find a candidate who uh, is is a strong candidate for that position and required that training um, certainly I would make sacrifices in my budget um, and we would I think find the resources to to do that I, I don't think that would be an impediment to us um if we found the right person uh, who needed it um so but but it's i think for now it's it's really one of the few areas we have the ability to try to meet some of the, the targets based on the, the race we were trying to get to right it's a great question because i've always said those line items have always been too lean mm -hmm. and to keep seeing them getting bit away at is 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 hard um giving it up now, hoping to gain it back in the future when I'm fully staffed. Mm -hmm. So I, some came out last year, so. And on the grants, if the 12,000, you know, 12,000 being taken out of a grants match uh, with the expectation that ARPA is gonna be used, mm -hmm. what does that look like for this department in the future when the, there's an, 
kind of a bigger gap to bridge uh once that money dries up is a i guess that's a question for the future really yeah it's it's i mean it this is one of the things i hate to do which is to build ourselves a, a new fiscal cliff that we do have to uh deal with in the future i think one of the things um don and i have talked about um doing is you know this the way we we went through our budget process now is we look at a lot of prior year history, which is very good for helping us project and make um, assumptions about FY24. I think one of the things that we're going to work to do is to create, you know, if we do this in 24, what does this mean in 25? What does this mean in 26? So that we can't, we, because there are so many things that are cyclical. So this would be an area where ideally what we would do is in 26 or 20, you know, 26, start showing some increases. Um, back into this line item because ARPA would disappear. Bill, uh, Bill Ahern's budget is a great example of this because some, he has cycles in terms of, um, you know, some of the salt purchases and uh, Kirk's budget also a good example because of the election. So right now we took a lot of savings in elections that next 25, we're not gonna be able to take. So I think one of the things we'd like to do is get to the point where we can show the council, hey, this is what it looks like in 24, just so you know, this is what it means in 25 and 26, um, because you're absolutely right. We we have to, it, it's a temporary, it's a temporary Band-Aid uh, that I would prefer not be a tool that we use, but we we were trying to, we were just trying to get to a target. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's hard to see it go from 15,000 down to 2,500. Um, I'm the only cost center that carries a line item for grant match. So um, this is gonna cover my department only for anything in FY24 at this point. Mm -hmm. But as the manager said, I'm, I'm gonna be right there ready to pound it right back up to what we need and, and potentially help other, other um, department heads if they need it. Um, so there's the future. You're welcome. It's good to hear that you plan on still being here to <laughs> pound for that money in 25, 26. <laughs> Thank today <laughs> but just i, I say this every time you thank you you're the best i hope we can get you those positions filled as soon as you yes. possible well, fingers crossed you know in the next couple of months i find a permanent administrator to to help out with just some of some of the duties the day-to-day -day duties really really are burdensome mm -hmm. in that i can't get to some other things and you can't just leave somebody hanging at the counter mm -hmm. um Zoning permit applications have a have a timeline. Um, you can't leave an electrician or a contractor out to dry. Say, well, I'll get to you in two weeks. You know, that's it's um, it's been difficult. So we'll get there. I, I truly believe we'll get there. Um, it's just going to take a little bit more time. I just crossed my mind and I don't know if you've already looked into it, but is there any way that we could like rely on like a deco or um, Kelly, not Kelly services. What, what's the, another temporary agent? Like West staff. Yeah. West staff, I, I believe you. our HR manager, Rick looked into that. And um, for whatever reason, I don't remember the reason I apologize, um, but it, that was not something that we could utilize. Okay. So. So um, people don't understand how technical um, a zoning administrator, a permit administrator's work is. And um, sure, I could have someone answer the phones, but that still means taking a message and then handing it off. It's yeah. someone who's willing to invest the time and learn legal aspects of zoning. Council Lozon. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, earlier, Janet, you said, um, and I'll quote, we're limping along hardly. Um, you know, we work very hard to attract businesses to Barry. I work very hard at it. And, you know, we've permitted some new ones. And I can tell you that your attitude, your customer service, the way you treat people, it's second to none. Even coming in here tonight, your attitude, you're happy, you're smiling. I'm not happy today. It's <laughs> the afternoon with a bunch of lawyers. Awful. You know, but you're always, you know, I just want you to know that. Yeah. How much I, how much I think we all 
appreciate your attitude. And I know how difficult it is when you're down, <laughs> everybody. Um, but thank you, because you have, you've just done the job. And most importantly, I get it. I'm not blowing smoke up your rear. <laughs> it, it's what I get from the Forbins folks, from Lajeunesse Construction. When people need answers and what you just said, you can't leave people hanging, you don't leave people hanging. And I know that often, you know, when they go to you at four o'clock in the afternoon and they have an answer by nine o'clock the next morning, it's because you didn't grab dinner at six o'clock. Maybe you grabbed dinner at eight o'clock. So, you know, just thank you so much because I can't do what I do. I'm at a point in my life where I love bringing businesses to Barry. I love working with young entrepreneurs, but I can't do what we're trying to do if, if I don't have support in the city hall. And you are that support. You and Carol, you're the two, <laughs> you know, like call Carol, call Janet. If you can't get an answer from them, there is no answer. So, <laughs> but I, you know, I just want to say thank you very much because especially now this summer, you know, the construction projects are not going as smoothly as anybody would like. Um, but an answer from your office always does. So thanks. Thank you. And I just wanted to, to say with regards to um, uh, changes to the grand list and, and accounting for sales and stuff like that, it's, it, it's not as simple as just plug a new value in based on the sale because um, the grand list needs to reflect equitably the values across the city. And if you've got two houses next door to each other that are assessed at the same amount and one of them just sold for mm -hmm. 50,000 more than their assessment, that doesn't mean you can all of a sudden jump up their assessment. So there's a lot more to it. And it's, it, it's actually a big part of what's going to happen starting next spring when we start the citywide reassessment, which is going to really level our playing field across the, across the city, which will be great. That's right. It's all about um, assessment being fair and equitable. And um we're going to overcome some of the unfair and unequitable neighborhoods in the next couple of years. And I, and I look forward to, you know, that finally getting done. Nice. Jenna, what are some of the things you're hoping to hand off to the junior planner permit administrator? Are they mostly going to be doing development review support? Um, or will they be doing more like long-term comprehensive planning projects or special planning projects? I foresee the latter. It's, it's, that person that is going to be able to assist the planning commission, okay. um, keep up with our regulations where I'm struggling to, to keep up with that. Um, I hope some grant assistance, but primarily I, I hope that junior planner um, position can, you know, jump right in the hot seat or, or work their way into that seat to, to, to help with um, the development review part of, of development. It's um, when does our zoning not work? Zoning is, is a living, breathing document. Um, we've all, we've recently been talking about, um, you know, changes for the cannabis, the planning commission's working on uh, revisions for housing. Mm -hmm. It's a document that doesn't, you know, sit. It, it needs to be addressed, needs to be reviewed constantly. And, and I hope that that person can take that on um, and do, a, do justice to it at this point, for sure. Thanks. You're welcome. Also, I should add too that I really, I know I've asked you some very wonky questions about the bylaws, uh, including one related to uh, um, uh, a lot across the street from mine. So I really appreciate uh, the, the customer service you provided me personally. So I try, yeah, um, which I know you provide to everybody. So I haven't been very good about answering some of those emails. Um, sometimes I, I don't know the answer and I have to work very hard at finding the answer. Um, it, it's all very dynamic and interesting for sure. So thank you for your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Janet. Yeah. Thank you. And have you considered cloning? <laughs> <laughs> I've considered everything. <laughs>
All right. Jeff is up. Buildings and community services. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So I will start off by telling you that um, at the very first budget Congress, I did not endear myself to the city manager when I cut <laughs> the city hall maintenance budget by about $5,000 and told me he was have to put up with the heat in his office. Um, <laughs> but we did, uh, the Congress I thought went very well, I was a little hesitant at first, you know, being all together at one time doing that. Um, I thought it was an original idea. I thought it was a great chance to look at everybody's budgets and take input from your fellow department heads. It was, it was an, an excellent experience. So the facilities, BCS facilities department consists of myself. Um, we have four maintenance positions right now. Um, and actually we're down to three. Uh, one went out today for surgery. Um, don't know when he'll be returning. We also have another position that is basically staffing public safety maintenance and city hall maintenance. And we have one vacant maintenance position. Um, the in-house posting for that position came down yesterday. So we will be looking externally for a filling in that position. <clears throat> we have one full-time cemetery maintenance person. Um, in the summer months, we have up to eight part-time people. Um, <clears throat> I know that this past year, we finally, we got back to eight. We'd only had about four the previous year. And those four people back online really showed this year. Um, we got a lot of compliments on all three cemeteries. Um, I know last year we got some poor feedback on especially St. Monica's and Elmwood because everything was focused on hope. Um, but this year it, it went really well. Um, we manage maintenance and upkeep of City Hall, the Civic Center Complex, public safety building. That includes cleaning, maintenance, repairs, HVAC, everything under the sun. Um, over the years, the building maintenance line items for these buildings has typically been an easy target when budget cuts need to be made. Um, and it shows some of these buildings are, are very old. This building alumni hall, the auditorium. Um, I think with this capital improvement plan that we've been working on goes into effect, uh, we can get some, some major repairs done to these buildings. And then you'll see that building maintenance number start to level off a little bit. It won't be spiking. I mean, we've, there's been years where we've budgeted say 38,000 and we've spent 65, 70. Um, we maintain and landscape seven parks, nine playgrounds, athletic fields, and three cemeteries. I think a few years ago, I, I came in and actually gave you a number, well, maybe it was a different council, how many acres we, we mow you know, on a daily basis. And I'll share that with you again sometime because it's, it's a lot more than people think. Um, we host community recreational athletic activities. Um, I threw some numbers in there. There's basically 15 annual events. These, these are returning events at the auditorium, um, the BOR, um, the skating season actually started tonight and will run through the end of February. Um, there's a number of one day events at Alumni Hall, as well as a weekly department of motor vehicle CDL testing. So every Wednesday, each month they're there, they rent, they rent an office, they use the back lot and they conduct uh, CDL testing. Um, a few things that I didn't list on here that we do, um, we are a Red Cross shelter. We are an emergency overflow hospital for Central Vermont Medical Center. We do Red Cross blood drives, Central Vermont home health hospice flu clinics. And I'm sure as most of you know, back during the height of COVID, we were a testing and vaccination site for the Vermont Department of Health. The next slide. Um, so these are our big hitters in our, in our budget, uh, City Hall, public safety maintenance. The facilities includes 
odd parks and trees, VOR, and the cemeteries. Um, as it states here, nearly two thirds of the cost increases are driven by projected fuel and propane increases. Um, beyond the fuel propane costs, nearly the remainder of the cost increases are driven by contractual personnel costs and seasonal staff increases. Um, the full time staff are all members of the United Steel Workers, which we are in negotiations with now. Um, Filling this vacant position we have is, is going to be difficult. Um, the contract calls for certain levels where you bring someone in. Um, these levels are nowhere near what private sectors are paying people right now. For example, uh, cemetery help this past summer. Typically, I was paying mowers 15 bucks an hour, uh, weed whackers about 12 to 13. The only way I could get anybody. Everybody made $18 an hour this year. And that's because they could walk in, you know, people could walk in off the street into the granite sheds with no experience at all. And they were starting them at between $22 to $25 an hour. Um, altogether, fuel, propane, personnel, and seasonal staff account for 99.1% of the budgeted cost increases. Um, our savings achieved. Cemeteries, uh, annual mower replacement. We're doing a much better job of maintaining our equipment now. Um, we were looking at, at some years, we had to purchase two and three mowers. Uh, we've got it down to one a year now. Um, parks and trees, a tree removal. We, we, have, we had a budget of, I think, $10,000 for tree removal. We cut that back. Um, we have the what's called the shade tree fund, which takes care of the main street trees and other trees within the city. Um, and that's got a little over $20,000 in it. So if we run into a situation where we've got to take down two or three trees, we can tap into that fund. And then we saved some water, pool water and sewer in the facilities department. <laughs> um, not a very big presentation, um, but I will say um, I'm, I'm I'm proud of the, st the staff that I have now. I think we've we've come a long ways. Um, adding this this extra person will help immensely. So we'll get a posting out. Hopefully, find somebody qualified. If you know anybody that wants to work for the city and likes working around buildings, grounds, um, maintenance, send them our way. We'd love to have them. Thank you, Jeff. Any questions? Uh, I'll ask one. So on the um, the building, the city hall maintenance fund that's budgeted for, is it 67 this year? Or next, or no, it was, uh, it's down, down to, it was 67 and 21 audited, and now it's uh, 20, or, I'm sorry, I can't follow my line here. 20,000, right? It's down to 20,000. 20,000. And so that, that covers things like the HVAC and it'll cover that'll just be, anything that comes up in these fixtures. That'll just be regular repairs. There's still, we still have some code issues to deal with, but we still have money from the $1.7 million bond okay. that is earmarked for code violations. Okay. And that's what the majority of these, these items to be done are under that. So we can cover them with that bond money. And that includes like code violations, like the bathrooms not being ADA accessible and things. Yep. Okay. Sprinklers, um, <clears throat> smoke detectors, uh, fire alarm panel. Thank you. Any questions? Comments? Yeah. Now you're going to hate me for this one. So <laughs> um, <laughs> trash is in the parks. Is that something that we can kind of get back? Tra trash, trash, tra cans. trash cans in the parks. I know that um, we've developed over the years a, a, a kind of carry in, carry out policy. But I noticed a lot of times in the parks that I visit in our community, um, people don't carry out hardly anything. Um, but they carry in a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and when I talk to people at parks, one of the biggest concerns that they have is that there's no place for them to put stuff and kind of that, that burden, essentially. Um, 
And so I was just kind of curious if that was something that we might be able to address. I know it's not, um, I don't know, just. Yeah, well, you know, we'll, we'll take another look at it. Um, what precipitated that was um, just right here in City Hall Park. You know, you'd empty them on a Monday morning and Tuesday morning, they're filled again with household garbage. Um, people don't want to pay Casella or Myers to come and pick up their trash. It's easier to drive down at night and, and stuff them in a city city barrel or a dumpster. We we never used to lock the dumpsters up on the hill. Sure. We, we lock them all the time now. Sure, sure. You come in on a Monday and they're overflowing. You know, I, I don't I don't think there's a real easy answer to it, Michael. Um, but you know, we can certainly look at it again. The other thing is when recycling went into effect, for every trash can we put out now, we have to put a recycling can sure. next to it. So there'd be an increase in cost for that. Sure. Okay. Certainly, we could certainly look at it. I appreciate your time for sure. I really do, Jeff. You know that. I know you do. Yep. Thank you. That it? <laughs> that was a little I, I was waiting for that. <laughs> Just waiting for it. So whatever happened to my zero? No. Um, that one uh, still runs like a chair. You're going to turn? <laughs> No, it, interestingly, when uh, Karen bought me a new zero turn mower, and I felt so badly for the city that I sold them my used one at a hugely discounted <laughs> price, <laughs> and it's still going. I drive by Elmwood and yeah. give them a thumbs up. Yeah. Um, are we using, and it's really, it's a serious question along those lines, because we had the question many years ago when we didn't have zero turns, we had all these John Deere tractors that are great machines for a specific purpose, not really for mowing. Mm -hmm. And we had a conversation about efficiency and how zero turn mowers are just more efficient. Yeah. They're faster. And when you're mowing as many acres as you're mowing, so have we kind of made that transition to all zero turns you, and how's still, that working? We still have two, two basic lawn tractors, mm -hmm. the two simplicities. Um, and that's basically for St. Monica's and Elmwood. Um, it's just, those cemeteries, the monuments are a lot closer together. Mm -hmm. um, you don't get the efficiency with a zero turn when you're moving around in between the monuments. Uh, but we do use a zero turn at Elmwood on the front lawns. Um, and if one of the typical riders goes down, he'll, he'll mow between stones with, with yours because yours is a smaller base than the 62 inch we have. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, we, we're basically... Um, we only have two riders, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven zero turns now. So are we looking in equipment purchases? Are, are, are we looking for those efficiencies? I mean, you know, labor costs are going up. Fuel prices are going up. Uh, you know, that all affects your budget. It all affects your efficiency. So are we, when you look at equipment, are you looking at equipment that will make your, your you know, your employees more, our employees more efficient? Yes. In fact, uh, I've been having the discussions about maybe our next purchase may be a, an electric or battery operated mower. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been hearing, I've been hearing good things. Um, and I know at some time, if I don't do it on my own, I'm probably going to be pushed into doing it. And mm -hmm. So I, you know, I'm going to start researching those. Um, but yeah, we do look at we look at you know what you can what you can mow easier with what's what's better for the operators. Um, riding on one of them simplicities is not the most comfortable thing in the world. Um, the zero turns or better seating, uh, just you know the fact that you can just spin it around and head the other way. Where with a tractor, you drive in, you back up, you turn around, and head the other way. Um, yeah. You will hold on to those two simplicities until they die, but the majority of the, the majority of the equipment is going to be high efficient zero turn mowers. Thank you, and thank you for that skag. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. It's I just found the line that I was seeing that there's fifty one thousand under new maintenance and then twenty thousand under improvements and repairs. So what's the distinction between those two lines? The that's uh, that's interesting. Right. Seventy-one thousand in 
potential maintenance, it seems like a threshold that would cross over into capital capital budget. Um, which one? So 51,000. That's the damage. position. Oh, that's a position. Yep. Okay, got it. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Stephanie, welcome. Hi, welcome. Hello. Nice to see you. What's wrong? So my department is um, buildings and community services. We're like an umbrella and recreation is a section that's underneath it. Um, I am, my title is the assistant director. So I am um, an assistant to Jeff. Uh, recreation is, you know, where my degree is and, you know, where a lot of my um, specialty in the park that I, I very much love. Um, so we'll jump right into um, the recreation budget here. Um, so under the recreation category, um, there's the one full-time employee, which is, is myself. And then we have um, at the ice rink, I have like um, some skate guards and cashiers. And then there's pool personnel, um, the director, assistant director, um, cashiers and lifeguards. And so my budget categories have like personnel for me, FICA and all that. And then um, for those two categories, pool and um, the rink is like 3,000. I'm not looking at the number, but like 3,000. Next slide, please. I'd like Janet. <laughs> so a lot of, um, j just a slight increase, but it's basically, um, you know, wages, healthcare, um, pensions. We really went through. Um, I have been extremely fortunate the last couple of years with grants. The last two summers, I was able to land a grant that um, I'll speak to the last summer. At, it covered all the um, pool personnel salary for the summer and allowed us to offer season passes at a 50% reduction and the camps um, at a 75% reduction. And so those were like two wonderful grants and then another little one before that. Um, I also had another grant that um, has assisted me to purchase um, mannequins, um, diving bricks, um, pool equipment so that we can do our best to try to eliminate this lifeguard shortage. You know, what can we do so that we can um, get the training right at our, at our own pool and, you know, train, you know, I'm interested in training people at our pool, but I'm interested in central Vermont, you know, as a whole to train. Um, it also has now given me things to expand um, programs like a water aerobics. I, the grant helped me to get some equipment. So when I offer the program, you don't have to worry if you have the equipment, you sign up. Um, so next slide, please. <clears throat> and you know, your basic dues membership fees. Um, I'm very active in the Vermont Recreation and Parks Association. Um, I think I've held all the offices that you can hold. So I'm kind of like more on, a, I think they wonder what I'm doing right now, but I've, I've been to all those. <laughs> um, and, you know, I keep up with the NRPA because that's where a lot of grants come through. So that is, a uh, is helpful. And then, um, I'm still, I stay certified. I'm a, um, lifeguard certified, um, first aid and all of that. And I'm a water safety instructor certified so that, um, you know, we're shorthanded or it's really busy. You'll see me hopping up there on, on the lifeguard chair. Um, but you'll see me even happier when, you know, swimming lessons, I'm teaching swimming lessons. I'm like very happy. Um, <laughs> so um, that's kind of like, there's just a small amount of dues memberships and fees, but I get a lot from that. Um, next. And training and development. Um, there's, you know, like not a, not a lot of funding there, but um, I am nationally certified. So I keep up with my continuing ed credits. Um, it's for every two years. I just um, recertified in September. And lifeguard training, water safety instructor, um, I, I just did both of those in the last um, little bit. I'm going to take the test, so I don't really like to do that so much. But um, And then um, with training, I go to all the um, rec association quarterly trainings. I'm really big on training, and I'm just lucky with our association a lot for very low cost. So. So rec supplies, um, the rec supply categories, you know, covers things like um, the arts and crafts, the, the basketballs. Um, oh, I, I just bought some paddle ball um, nets and 
um, you know, balls, um, just that basic like items that you need to put on like breakfast with Santa, you know, it'll help me pay for um, some of the goodies that Santa will help give out. Um, rec programs that um, we had a reduction in the budget um, because there was a recreation fund balance that I'll be able to use to help pay for instructors. And so there's like, you can see, you know, the camps. Um, I, I do have to say that the egg hunt um, is a more pricey event, but um, somebody helped me to realize that, you know, when you, when you have like, you know, between five and 700 kids there, you divide that up by what you paid, you know, you're looking at like two, $3 a child and it's like, it's a good deal. And we, you know, typically get up to a thousand people in the park. Um, so, and then um, those are some pictures of the camps that we had this summer. And so just to be clear, even with that $500 reduction, you're still good to do the egg hunt. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I tried it. Well, <laughs> I'm used to working with not a lot and try to have a program pay for itself. Mm -hmm. So keep the price reasonable, but balance it out. So that's what I'll continue to try. Um, and again, I jumped ahead on the pool a little bit just to talk about some of the equipment, but the grant um, last summer was the, I think the best summer of my entire career at the pool. It started out very slowly because I was, you know, we didn't have enough personnel that that was a little bit um, tricky to try to figure out, but we, we worked through that. Um, and the grant had paid for the pool noodles that you'll see there, several life jackets, um, the connect Four game, um, all these items that you come to the pool and it's not just like, okay, there's a pool. And for those of you who grew up here, okay, so no diving board, no tower, you know, we took away all the fun there was, um, but now, you know, you come there and the kids can have a good time. They have diving toys. That was in the grant too. Um, they're pretty lenient. You know, I let the football happen for a while till, you know, me and Stephanie has to take the football out because it was, you know, getting a little bit rough, but, um, the best part is that the charts show that we are reaching more Barry city residents. And that was the most important to me. Um, last year, it was pretty close to 50, 50 between like town and outside and city. Um, but we're reaching, you know, more city residents and, um, we did open up um, once for homecoming in the afternoon at no charge. And then there was one very hot day and we let, let folks come. And what that did is not only had a place for people to come, um, but you introduced to like, that's a destination park up there. So they got to see the pool. They hadn't been to the pool, but yet, you know, the playground, the tennis courts and all of that. So um, it, I, I really think that I know there were pros and cons about whether or not to do that pool over but I really think that we reached a lot of people. Um, I also purchased a wheelchair with a grant and that was used this summer and that totally melted my heart to see that. Um, there were a lot of um, grandparents who would in the past sit down and like watch the children. Now they're in the water with them. Um, and those are kind of the goals that you wanna see. You wanna see it more inclusive. I think I have a lot more to learn about how to make it even more inclusive, um, you know, but we're getting there. Um, I need to learn a little bit more how to expand the swimming lessons, you know, in that area, but it all takes, you know, I just have to learn a little bit more. Um, and so, you know, basically we went through and, you know, we had two good solid days and, you know, everyone went really went through their budget and, um, you know, I think that I'll, I'll, I'll make it, you know, with that reduction um, with the programs, we'll make it work. And I think that's it. Any questions? Thank you, Stephanie. I don't have a question. Um, I just want to say that, you know, uh, the entire city staff does a lot with a little, but very uh, few of the programs, the operations that the city have, um, 
directly impact people's lives in an incredibly tangible way. You know, like all the work that Jeff and Janet do, they impact people's lives all the time. Tom was talking about that. Counselor Lozon was talking about that earlier. Uh, but you, you know, you, you create summer memories, you create community, and you do it with so little, and you do such a great job of bringing in outside funding um, and just making it work for mostly for the kids in Barry. Um, and that's just an incredibly important thing for children who uh, for children who have unsteady home lives, uh, for children who are growing up in circumstances in which they don't get as many opportunities as other children do. Uh, you make sure that at least whenever any kid comes to one of your programs, um, that they have just as much of uh, of access to those programs as anybody else in Barrie. And that's just incredibly valuable and incredibly important. And I know you know that, um, but I just wanted to say that out loud and say thank you. Because I'll be it's really for great. <laughs> 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 so we do. Any any other questions? What he said. <laughs> Thank you very much. Just a compliment for you about the, you know everything that you do. I know you and I have a lot of interactions. I mean, all the time. Um, but you're always amazing, and and the things that you are bringing to our community, like Councillor Wazizak had said, are just priceless. The Easter egg hunt um that that both the mayor and i were able to go to um and, and help participate and set up um and just all of the smiling faces uh, and and are the reason that we do these things and it just your entire presentation just kept a smile on my face knowing that the the things and the memories that we are bringing to these children and these families and people in our communities um just, just Thank you. I appreciate it. Great, thanks. You know, one just quick thing is, okay, in maybe two weeks, I've been here 35 years. And I think one of the greatest things at the egg hunt for me is to watch the parents who were children now bringing their children. Right. And I'm actually <laughs> seeing that at the pool too. And that, that to me is, you know, worth a million dollars right there. Um, so um, I guess I have a, a more... Different kind of fun. I have like a fun job. Yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> like I'm having meetings today, and I'll like, I'm gonna like go. You can say it. You can say it. He wants the football back. <laughs> yeah. You want the football back? <laughs> What's this kid? I don't know. I don't discriminate. I have to do you know like safety first. Thank you. Before you go, Stephanie, I mean you're at the top of the, your career. You've held every position there is to hold at the uh, Vermont Parks and Recreation Association. You run an outstanding program on a shoestring budget, probably one of the best values in the state of Vermont. What, what do you hope for the future, uh, I mean, in the next 10 years for the Recreation Department? I know it's really been run on a shoestring. So Million dollar budget. <laughs> <laughs> might have that tomorrow. Wait, today's Tuesday. Thursday morning, I might be able to tell you a lot. <laughs> you know why? You know why? Think about it. Uh -oh. <laughs> you know why. Oh, yeah. Um, Sounds like a hefty donation Thursday morning. Tom, I might need your help with accounting on it. But, um, uh. you know, I, I do want to see, you know, like more, um, you know, the intergenerational. I just think that's important because the demographics that I'm seeing, I'm seeing a lot of like the toddlers, but, you know, older folks too and i think there needs to be a way to um bring you know bring them together a little bit more um and get more people back into some of the resources like um i've just got to get someone to help me lay down a pickleball court in the odd but we'll be bringing people in there daily who might not have been in there they only come in there to vote but now you know to bring people back that way and i'm already seeing it in the pool but we have more than just pool. We have, you know, like the, the pass, you know, transportation pass now with like e-bikes, you're going to, you're seeing more, um, I can't wait to get an e-bike, more people who, um, you know, are using e-bikes. So we're working on, you know, you know, where can they go with those? Um, I'm not really, I haven't been too involved with the river access, but I think that, you know, if anything like that comes about, that's just, you know, one more avenue. So what I see for 10 years is just trying to, um, Pull all the community members okay so we create community through people parks and programs and that's what we try to do um just like you know what was downtown yesterday um so that's what i hope for 10 years 
I hope I'm still alive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Mayor, sorry, Sarah. Oh, sorry, sir. I just had a, a thought about the pool area being really nice. I spent a couple of nice hot days during the summer with my nephew. And uh, it was really nice to have some picnic tables and maybe even a shelter uh, covering shade. Um, and the sun does hit that, um, that area mm -hmm. pretty, pretty intensely. Yes, yeah, so we have some picnic tables, but that's, you know, like another thought. Um, if we don't have funding to put up like a shelter type, what we would have funding to do is, you know, okay, I'm kind of old school. Big Drill the hole exact right in the picnic table and, you know, put that nice, you know, eight foot um, umbrella work. right there because, um, again, I'm seeing that too because there's very few places for shade. Um, but um, thank you for coming to the pool this summer. Um, <laughs> I love water. I so. grew up going to the pool, um, riding my bike down um, Bridge Street and over on the bike path. I would always call our parents on the payphone that used to be down there. Yes. <laughs> we didn't have to up. We don't want to ride back. <laughs> So, so that's why you keep doing what you're doing. Get up to here, you know, something like that. So, so the real question is though, did you call using collect? Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what I did. <laughs> yes, that's what you did in college. You had to do yeah. that. <laughs> okay. Well, now I'm picturing like a tourist attraction of Vermont's last payphone. <laughs> Use the money to pay for more season passes. No, it's not there, but it, because they started charging us to have it there. So oh, that's uh, a then we got in a nice budget. A council gave us a phone. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> okay, I better go now. <laughs> You're going to get in trouble. You better go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thanks. That takes us to our item C under new business, which is the um, related to a governance committee. I was looking at the timelines for just to introduce this item uh, for the city charter, and uh, those those clocks are uh, coming pretty quickly. And I know in the past we've uh, developed council working groups, um, but I I thought. Um, based on conversations with uh, Manager Strela Castro and Clerk Dawes, that it, it would be worthwhile to set up a standing governance committee to look at charter issues. Um, this is something a lot of communities have around the state. It brings more process uh, to um, the amendment to the most important um, governing document we have. It's higher than an ordinance. It has to go to the General Assembly. It has to go to the voters. Um, and uh, and a lot of these committees and other communities develop um, really good reports uh, based on charges that the legislative body like councils and select boards uh, put before them. And so uh, this proposal would en envisions a seven member body uh, to uh, pr prepare um, uh, recommendations for council's consideration for both the March town meeting, town meeting and the November town meeting. And so with that, any questions? Seems to be a lot more than just a committee, um, you know, to study appointing the clerk. That's, it'd be a hard no on that. Yeah. Well, actually what I had brought up a while ago was whether the city would wanted to just discuss and explore the options around separating clerk and treasurer and whether a, an appointed treasurer is something Mm -hmm. that um Barry Town did it other communities have done it um now that we have a, a really robust finance department um whether there's i mean there's pros and cons so it it might be mm -hmm. something to talk about but no your your clerk position must remain independently <laughs> elected so. yeah i would think and then you know i'm not sure um planning commission drb members you know if you're not a resident of the city you can't be on the planning commission or drb was there an issue somewhere that so that was true that that up until just this legislative session that drb members and planning commissioners under general law could only be residents that just right. changed this year and so this would restore what was uh the case um 
prior to um, this legislative session. Mm -hmm. I think it was you remember was S one eighty one. I can't remember. I can't remember. remember it. Um, so it was to restore what um, what we had before, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and I think it's from from my my well. I think we could have different views on whether or not that's a pro or con. The idea with this committee, same thing with clerk appointing clerk treasurer. I also lean to an elected clerk. Uh, this would be an idea to evaluate uh, um, the pros and cons and to come back with some recommendations uh, for council to consider um, before, to, before packaging something for the voters and, and language that's really been vetted and had a lot of discussion behind it. I don't want to cut you off. No, no, no. There's just, it, it's more, I mean, I'm not necessarily opposed to forming a committee it's all of the stuff that we're pushing them you know mm -hmm. uh, you know i've had three days <laughs> to think about it and there's just a lot of information here that uh you know it's, it's a resolution it's not even a, a vote of the council it's a resolution hey we are pushing you know we want you to look at all these things and if you're we're not looking at it until november maybe we could pump the brakes a little bit you know, take the November stuff out and maybe think about it later on. And when I say later on, I don't mean six months from now. I mean, yeah. you know, maybe three weeks from now so that we're not throw, you know, I'd just like to have the discussion at the, at the council level first before we shoot this stuff to a committee. Yeah, so was that? Uh, yeah, so I think that, you know, I'm I'm largely supportive of this. I think that... <laughs> The entire city at this point can probably agree that our last charter change process didn't go as we all would like it to. Um, so I think that there is definitely a lot of merit to um, to having a more formal committee, a more formal process. And like the mayor said, you know, this is a we're going out on a limb here. There are plenty of charter committees throughout the state. Um, but I do agree with Councillor Lozon's point of this uh, of the long list under the, the third or fourth or no fifth. Mm -hmm resolved um you know i think that the committee once formed can have conversations amongst themselves of what they view as the priorities you know of the council it's some of this stuff on here the clarification of section 601b yeah you know, that's probably something we could get done <laughs> in one night throw it to the voters seems more of a formality as opposed to uh an appointed versus elected clerk or treasurer which seems to be a bigger question that we would want to take longer to accomplish um so my first question is whether the um both the city manager and the clerk are in favor of um forget the substance for a second of what's written but the concept of a charter committee as opposed to the you know frankly carol's added group that she's always commandeered as we're heading up to election season um in the past that's sort of how these things have happened is carol and uh, one or two counselors as to not break the quorum have talked amongst themselves about charter change recommendations and brought that back to the council um and while i think that for some of the small technical changes that we've seen when we got rid of the city plumber for example that has worked perfectly fine but having uh, larger conversations about um you know the the non-residents on public bodies the elected uh, versus appointed clerk and treasurer separating the two um yeah i, I can see how that would require a longer conversation more study more uh, people who know answers to those very complicated questions um so yeah yeah i i um the the concept the composition of the body um i was supportive of i i think uh, i defer obviously the content of what this committee looks to 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 the council um i mean i think one thing to caution right is is um for example um you know does the does a body sort of preempt the council from taking an action the council may be leaning towards like that's something for you all to decide mm -hmm. right um so if, just to just pick in one the the representation of committees right like a, a body could come back a committee could come back and say there is no challenge with it and maybe that's not a direction the council chooses to take so then you're going again so that's just mm -hmm. that's just something for you all to determine but um so i'm not weighing in on the content of the, the the matter but the composition is is i was consulted i'm i'm, I'm comfortable with it yeah 
And, and just to, to give you a, a little history, um, we did have a citizen charter review committee 10, 12 years ago. Um, we worked on a, a significant, uh, I mean, page by page, section by section review of the charter um, and came up with uh, quite a substantial uh, charter for the voters and got voted down. Part of the reason that it gets voted that it got voted down is that if you're doing substantial changes that are voluminous, you um, that are too long to print them all on the ballot. Um, you have to do them as one yes, no question, the entire thing. Um, and that becomes a, a really hard sell. Um, you have to then print copies of the charter change. Uh, you have to you know, publish it. You have to send it out with absentee ballots. You have to post it in the voting booths. You have to, and, and the, you know, if there's one small section that voters are uncomfortable with, then the whole thing goes down. And so since then, um, it, it's been more of our practice to, you know, pick three or four things that um, that are uh, that are something uh, topics that are that are under discussion uh, so that we can put them as individual items on the ballot um, and it, I'm not saying that you can't do something more substantial and more holistic but I just want to let everybody know that's what the process is for doing um, larger sort of bulk changes um, I, some of the items that are that are proposed on the resolution, I, I think are worth exploring. Some of them don't. If I were on the committee, I don't think they're they're they rise to the level of needing exploring at this stage of the game, but but that's personal opinion. So yes, yeah, so I'm actually against this, and I think we've done a pretty damn good job at uh, excuse my language. Um at, at doing our charter changes since I've been on city council. Um, you know, I, I look at this resolution and I'm, I'm a little annoyed by it, I'm not gonna lie. Um, clarification of section 601B, ability for a city council to appoint multiple city attorneys based on respective uh, areas of expertise, um, it, extent and impact of over-representation of non-residents serving on city bo public bodies, which I think that's a reference to Bob Nelson, who is uh, on our, that is not. Well, well, I'm just saying that this right here, this list, so, well, this, just ask, uh, well, that's fine. I'm, I'm just letting you know that this list is a, <clears throat> I'm the mayor and I want this stuff to happen. And, yeah. and that's what it looks like to me. And if in, in a, it looks like a committee that's being set up, that one is going to burden staff already. And it's just, I, I'm a complete no on this. And it, it frustrates me because it, it feels like an, it feels like this is a uh, a process where we're going to end up having the mayor and one other councilor on here, and it's going to be driving the conversations that are not that are not here at city council level, which is our job to deal with the charter and to deal with those questions. If we don't want somebody on the council or on the on a position that is from another municipality, then we don't appoint them. We already have that in there, and I, it just this whole thing is just no. How do you really feel? I, I, I'm very <laughs> unhappy about this. <laughs> Look, I, Councillor, I've got my reservations as well. Um, you know, one thing I would like to make clear is that discretion rests here with the council. Mm -hmm. That if we do not want to send anything to a committee, if we want to look at a traffic issue ourselves and we don't want to send it to the traffic committee, that is certainly within our purview. And I hope, I, I think everybody understands that, that the committees are there and we appreciate the service of the members, but they're there to assist the council. And if the council feels that they want to keep the discussion here uh, in the council chambers, then we certainly have discretion to do that. You know, 601B, I mean, I think that's one of the issues. I was actually going to uh, bring that before the council in a couple of weeks and try to clean up that language because I, personally, I think we're in violation of the charter right now. And I think that is something that needs to be cleaned up. Um, you know, so as long as we understand that uh, some issues remain with the council, I'm okay. I'll 
try it. Ooh, excuse me. Yeah, uh, Councillor Stockwell. I see it as an opportunity to have a group that could do a little more depth and do a little study and inform the council with some background information and some recommendations, which, as Councillor Lozon was pointing out, we can take or not. We can say this doesn't agree with us, but it seems to me it would be potentially quite useful to have people who stay in the committee that can methodically go through these issues and do some background research. So I guess one of my biggest concerns in, in kind of reading over this document seems to be a lot of the things are more things that you, Mr. Mayor, have brought up personally um, with attorney uh, and some other things. I support a lot of the stuff that's in this document, but as a whole, I really don't support it. Um, I, I honestly feel that uh, it's just there's some things in here that are quite inappropriate like the extent and impact of overrepresentation by non-residents serving on city public bodies i think that it's important to have representation and who's to state what an overrepresentation is at that point it would be the mayor who would be the de facto in this particular resolution and a council lays on and then community or seven members I'm not okay with supporting this as written. I would say you could, there, there's opportunities to both split the questions of, is it, you know, is it good? Is it, is there merit in having a committee? And then also what are the areas of inquiry? Some of these areas of inquiry I put on this list, not because I feel strongly about them, but because other people have mentioned them. Um, we have committees where we have only one city resident, for instance, on board, sometimes that are driving uh, cost centers. Uh, where the city ends up paying uh, the bill. And it's mostly uh, uh, some of that can be largely influenced by out of town residents. That's an area of inquiry that something like this could look in. For instance, you know, I, well, there are other, other elements that I, on this list that I don't feel that strongly about, but have been mentioned to me as areas of the charter that um, could, could get a look at. And it's not saying that there should be a particular outcome it's saying that they sh people should look at these questions um take the time to look at what's in the charter what are alternatives um options um what's potential language and uh and then bring it back to the council to make a decision so that there's a uh, question by question do you want to do this do you want to do this do you want to do this um and uh and we've we have established committees to look at broad areas of inquiry and uh, this wouldn't be unusual to do, like as uh, Carol said, uh, for both the city or for other communities to have a charter committee to look at these questions and make sure they're well vetted before they come back to council. Because some of these can be very thorny legal questions that take hours um, to um, kind of understand uh, what's what's the current language means, what are the what are different options, what's legally sound, and how can you structure your city government. So, so it's not just my list, Councillor Wozniak. Yeah. So the first, you just touched on Mr. Mayor a couple of things I was going to say. Um, the first being that in in I first of all I want to say I was not involved in the drafting of this at all. I saw it for the first time when the rest of council did. Um, but there are things on here which I have mentioned to the mayor in the past or other people just when I'm talking about the city government, because as a counselor, I get a lot of questions about it. Um, so I think that another thing that's important to remember is that the mayor is the only member of this body besides our esteemed clerk and treasurer uh, that is elected by the uh, citywide as opposed to ward by ward. And I believe personally uh, that that enables the mayor uh, to set forward a vision of what uh, they believe that the, the city should head in, whether that be ordinance, charter, policy, or budget. Um, so my point is, I believe the mayor, and even if this was a, a, a list of things that the mayor wanted to accomplish, uh, you, you know, well, frankly, that's the mayor's prerogative. And there are six other councillors on this dais so that if we think that the mayor is wrong about something, we can push back and outvote the mayor. Uh, and I'm sure that that's what this council would do if a charter change came back from this committee. Um, 
uh, as Councillor Lozon pointed out earlier, just like with every other one of our city committees, uh, with rare exception, th they are not final decision makers. The council is, and that remains true, even if the committee sent back a report that uh, asked the council to do all of these things. We're under no obligation to do that. But it may allow for, as Councillor Stockwell mentioned, some of these much more uh, complicated legal questions or complicated policy decisions to be more vetted by, um, to be vetted longer and by a broader body than just the council. And, you know, I was, I'm also not uh, thrilled about the idea of, um, you know, a volunteer committee with whose members could have any kind of expertise uh, weighing in on what should or should not be the charter. But sometimes it's really good to have an outside pair of eyes looking at things. And I know that I, as a counselor, when we're talking about whether it's charter policy or ordinance, um, I get very in the weeds very quickly. I remember, well, we made this decision three years ago because of this conversation that happened and this data point that we had at the time and things change. Um, so I think that it's important that the council retain that authority as the final decision maker. Uh, and I think that there's nothing in this resolution that would prevent that. So I would like to amend um, the resolution to strike all of the bullet points um, in the fifth and sixth, um, be it further resolved, get rid of all those bullet points and have the first be it further resolved read, the committee will prepare a report for the 2020, March 2023 town meeting, including recommended date language or preferred alternatives period, and have the second be it further resolved, read the same thing only November 2023. So what I am saying is remove all the specifics and just ask this committee to come back with a recommendation for March of 2023 and November of 2023. And I think that that's something that could easily uh, continue. Just we know moving forward that before March and before November elections, we're going to get a report at some point every year about what this uh, committee may do. Uh, so that is my motion. And we have a couple hands. There's a motion. Is there a second? I'm going to second it for the point of discussion and to be just polite generally because that's who I am. There's a second. <laughs> uh, Council Newton. Yeah. So I would love to see on here for um, shall appoint residents and registered voters. I, I think that you know, one of the problems that we have with our, our committees is that we have multiple people serving on multiple committees and it's it, you know, it's one of those, those appointed positions. And, you know, if people want to have that, that much say, maybe they should run for city council. Um, and, and I'm wondering if maybe we should add that in there is if you're already on a committee, you shouldn't be part of this committee. I know that's going to not going to fly with everybody, probably no one, but that's okay. Well, as the mover, I would just say that I'm not, I will, I won't accept that as a friendly amendment because, um, I have, I, I understand. Decided at the end I, when I get it. Them. I get that. Councilor Sean Bell. Um, I guess I'm of two minds with this because it seems like a lot to ingest really quickly. Mm. When you say, Councilor Waz's Act, to take out all of the bullet points so that there's nothing there then it seems like a really vague mission for folks to prepare a report. It, it's like they have nothing, nothing to take aim at, you know, and, mm -hmm. and with other committees, for example, like with the equity committee, they had a formal charge. They had, and it was, and it was a, um, I don't know if doable is the word, but it was narrow enough that they didn't have a lot of different things to address. And as I look at this list, you know, if the bullets were to stay there, then it reminds me of some of the lists that I saw 
when I first came on the council that seemed like an awful lot to accomplish in one year mm -hmm. or in one six month period. Yeah. And, you know, likewise, if there's nothing on there, then it's like Too a open. shot in the dark. Mm -hmm. And if we're going to go with this idea, I'd really like to see that we have some priorities that are in there that we want to have looked at. Because it, it seems like a really formidable list as far as I'm concerned. I agree with that. Yeah. So I think that I have heard from other counselors that uh, there may be a path forward here, um, but it's a lot to take in at once and we might want to make some edits. Um, so I'd be prepared to withdraw my motion um, and either make a motion to table or um, ask that we not end discussion, but understand we're not going to make a decision tonight, give folks a couple of weeks to look over it, come back to it at the November 29th council meeting, because we don't want to do it on the 15th, because that's the ARPA thing, so that we kick it to the 29th. Uh, Steve, um, so I see commentary from the public. Uh, is it William or Sharon Tober? It's William. Uh, I was just lo looking at the, the thing about having a, a committee to study the charters. And I would kind of, I believe that we've elected the city council to make decisions like this. And I wouldn't be as comfortable with having something like charter changes being vetted by another committee on the other hand if you any counselor wants to get input from the public from members of the public about a possible charter change there's nothing to prevent you from asking members of the public um you know it, it certain things if you wanted to make a charter change uh you know there there might be things where i would have expertise i can't think that, that there would be but there are other members of the public who would have expertise. And I think the thing to do is, as counselors, you find those people and just do it yourselves. Thank you. And we also- uh, Is it Dave Delcor? Yeah, I was just gonna point out, I, there is no November election next year. So this would be the only thing on the ballot. And <laughs> based on the list, um, it, it seems like those kind of questions, if it, they were the only questions that were being asked, you'd get like 50 people voting on it. I just wanted to point that out. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, that Dave. ends that. <laughs> uh, actually, if you, were, if you were going to hold a special election in um, November, it wouldn't be taken up until the next legislative session anyway, and you might as well put all the questions on the March ballot, all right. that following March ballot. Yeah which would then be taken up at the same <laughs> legislative session. So, and you'd get more participation. Uh, Councilor Stockwell. I think um, Councilor Oh, Lozon Councilor Lozon. Lozon. Yep. Was I? I think so. Uh, I'd like to see the clerk uh, on the committee. I realize that there could be a potential <laughs> conflict. Well, you know, Carol, my biggest well, concern about like this, it. I'll be straight up, is that it's going to get all political. You know, and it, sh and it shouldn't, and it can't. And I've always, you know, since I've been associated with the city, first with Gene Stratton and then with you, I always had a, always had a clerk that I could look up to as someone mm -hmm. who was apolitical and was going to do the right thing, no matter who he or she upset. <laughs> they, they were going to let us know. So I, I'd be adamant about having the clerk on on the committee, uh, and as I said, I'm I'm counting that I'm counting on this not becoming political and not becoming an us against them. I see. I don't think this committee is going to get a whole lot done. So, all right, let's say we vote tonight. We're going to do the committee. All right, thirty days to apply. Fair enough. You know, so we give people thirty days to apply. That puts us on December. Now the council is in the middle of budget season and we've got to interview, I don't know, maybe six apply, maybe 60 apply. Now we've got, some, I, so my biggest concern, I don't think we're going to be able to do it for March because Carol, we got to have these warned by 
We would have to warn the first public hearing by the end of December, um, but you don't have to have um, language right. until that public hearing. So that means you have language around the end of January, um, but still it would be a relatively quick turnaround unless you targeted two or three specific areas. You know, and even removing the gender, e even remo removing gender, you know, making the language gender neutral as carol pointed out i felt really bad because carol got crushed <laughs> when, when when she did that we had so many we were cleaning up the charter there was nothing wild about it it was all mundane stuff a lot of it was grammatical and carol put so much work into it and because it was just so damn long people said they didn't they just didn't want to read it and they said i'm voting no because i don't trust them. <laughs> the nice thing about the um, making pronouns gender neutral is that we don't have to do it. Right. The legislature, Ledge Council actually has it as one of their directives that any oh. charter language that comes before them, they automatically make it gender neutral. So um, anything that we, we don't have to spend a lot of time and energy on advertising and putting things on the, the ballot or anything like that. Any section we put forward um, that includes uh, pronouns will be neutralized um, <laughs> by the by Ledger <laughs> Council um, at the State House. It, it's, it's not holistic. They're not gonna do the whole charter um, without us presenting it as a as a charter change, but certainly every section we put forward, they will be making those changes over time. So you know, I, I would be comfortable. I, I with apologies, Mayor. I'd, I'd gut your resolution. I'd have one paragraph saying, "Okay, we're going to establish a committee with." Uh, I think there were a total of seven members. Mm -hmm. So there would be the clerk the mayor and five other members, uh, five other citizens at large. And um, let's see who applies and what it looks like. And if it looks like it's just gonna be one big political thing, I'm not voting for it and not voting for any appointments. So, so I, know. I won't take that as a friendly amendment, but I will withdraw my motion so that if you felt like making yeah, so I'm fine with doing that if everyone else is just literally, I, I don't know that we do it in resolution form, but I don't think we need to rewarn it because it's been, a, it, it's on the agenda. But, you know, again, I don't even know what if no one is interested in serving? Um, what if only people from Barry Town are interested in serving? <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> So, Councilor Stockwell, there's a motion. I, I do think that the residents, the having residency in Barry City should be an important component, certainly a majority of most, if not all committees. But the other thing I would say is that maybe it should just be limited to review of ordinances and charter so that it's both broader and simpler. So, Councilor Lozon, you have a motion to... Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to just move to to establish the committee and we'll learn the rest. We may not give them any charge before January. We may not have time. So the council can, we can establish the committee. We can advertise the committee, see if anyone is interested. And that will give, I mean, we're 45 days away from seating this committee under the best of circumstances. So that will give us time to figure out what the charge of the committee is, something we all agree on, and what their initial tasks uh, as assigned by the council are going to be. So to establish a committee with five members, the clerk and the, or seven members, clerk and the mayor, and uh, and then to uh, follow the appointments policy to, to, to get it established with no residency requirement, even though they can't vote you, well, you it's the only policy we have. <laughs> I mean, we have to follow. Even if we pass this resolution, you still got to follow. I mean, yeah. so now we're not following our own policies. So, yeah, exactly. We'll figure yeah. it out as we go. Well, we'll be well, okay. So under under just uh, under discussion there, we so we have this appointments policy. We say mm -hmm. we're going to only set these up by resolution. We say we're going to step. We're going to be clear because we've. The reason we had that policy is because it was getting pretty noisy and political mm -hmm. about how we were setting up uh, boards, committees, and commissions. The idea is that 
council would only do this if we had a clear charge, we had a clear composition, we had clear terms, um, and, the, and that the appointment process was, uh, um, was, was established. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it gave people equal opportunity to get, get, get on board. And, uh, and so right now you wanna get the committee set up, loop back to a future council discussion where we talk about what the charge of the committee is gonna be. Yes, yeah. that, that's what I'd prefer to do because that way, well, we'll, we'll give people a head start on expressing interest. I mean, I think people will get the gist of what it's all about. So there's a motion, is there a second? I'll second it. Thank so, you. Oh, <laughs> Boone. Yeah, so I don't think this is ready for prime time in general. I mean, we've had three days to look at it and, uh, you know, I, I would agree with Councillor Wazak with tabling it for now. Um, so there's no, uh, so table the new motion. Um, I would, I, and I'd also I would agree make it, with, yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'd, I'd agree with you. This, this, this uh, I don't think there's enough consensus around this item to move forward. And uh, we're withdrawn. Gonna committee reset. Withdrawn. <laughs> Yours is withdrawn. Motion to table. Second. So it's already withdrawn. So there's no yep, motion to table. There's no, you can't well, table. Itself. You can, no, but you can table a discussion on an issue. Second. There's a motion. Uh, can you table a discussion? No, on you issue? can actually, okay. you can only table. You can, you can, you can uh, move to. I know that answer. Debate. You can table a motion only. You okay. Can, and, it That's is, fine. and there's no debate on if you, if you make a motion, if you make a motion to table, a motion that has been made and seconded. There is no debate. You have to vote the motion to table immediately. And then it sits around until someone says, take it off, you know, put it back on the table. So there's nothing for us to do anymore. <laughs> because the motion was withdrawn. So well, what we do know is that we're going to be looking at a committee reset and uh, that the manager has been evaluating different um, uh, boards, committees, commissions um to, and thinking about what's working what's not working going to come back for uh with some potential recommendations to council um it doesn't have to include a, a governance committee if that's not what it or a charter committee if that's not what the council wants to do um and uh and then i guess we can take up that item at that time yeah, so I just want to point out the two committees that have the majority of people that are not in the city are the Civic Center and the Cemetery Committees. Is that correct? I believe the Cemetery Committee is the one that you were referring to, which only has one person. Is that correct? I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm not that I'm, intimately familiar with the makeup of no? the committees. Sorry. Yeah. That's okay. I'm, I took a quick look. I think that's it. All right, so if we're done with that item, then- oh, that... Nope, I'm confused. So what are we doing? We're doing nothing. Nothing, nothing. nothing. at all. Yep, nothing. Let it go. Seem to be doing Let a lot. <laughs> Does that mean nothing even moving forward in subsequent meetings? No. Potentially, yeah. Well, well, any counselor could request an item put on the agenda in a future meeting. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Or it could come back as part of the- Committee reset. Yes. Okay. All right. So that takes us to roundtable. Um, Councilor Wozniak. Uh, everyone, get out and vote next Tuesday. As this is, I normally don't tell people how to vote, but this is my last opportunity before town meeting day. So I strongly encourage you to vote yes on Prop Two and Prop Five. Um, and in case anyone cares, you can check out my endorsements and you should vote for the people that I've endorsed because I think they're cool. But regardless, you should get out and vote. It's incredibly important. Uh, and there's a lot of important races and issues on the ballot this year. I'll pass. Councilor Stockwell. A resident down the street from me had some water coming into their basement, which was new. And, and their next door neighbor also, which they take care of, had water coming into their basement. And, you know, within hours, the city manager was there. Bill Ahern from, came to visit with them. So I just feel it was an excellent handling. I mean, they are, you know, they were, what do you do with this water coming into your cellar? You can't see it. You know, where is it coming from? And I just thought it was an excellent response from, on behalf of the city employees. 
Council Lozon. Uh, thank you. Well, once again, uh, Tracy and her volunteers did a wonderful job uh, with the uh, Halloween celebration in our downtown. Like I said, that incident was unfortunate, and I, I know it bothers Tracy and all the volunteers terribly, and I hope they don't take it too much to heart. Uh, with regard to the vote, I just want to thank all of the candidates, all of them, whoever they are. Um, you know, it takes a lot to put yourself out there and spend the entire summer, uh, you know, campaigning away from your family, away from your friends, missing all the fun stuff. So regardless of whether they're successful or not, I appreciate the fact that they ran and gave people options. I'm all set. Uh, get out and vote. Um, really, make sure you get out and vote. I don't normally get on the soapbox about political things on council, but vote no for Proposition uh, 5, Article 22. Um, it's too vague. It doesn't have enough direct language, and uh, the word woman or abortion aren't even in it. Um, so to me, um, I, that's my, my vote as, as a person. And, and that's my round table. Thank you. Councillor Schombel. I echo the sentiment to please vote. I won't say how. I have a clear idea as to how I think it should be done, but <laughs> that's not my call for anybody else. Still, um, there's a lot at stake. And I think there's a lot of thought that people really need to put into this and think about what the possibilities of the future or lack of the future could be. Yep. So I would agree with everybody, obviously, get out there and vote. Um, it's our civic duty. And it's our it's a privilege that we have in the United States to do that. Not all countries have that blessing. Um, I'm with Councillor Schimbel. Um, I, I have my personal opinions about the items that are on there. Um, most people know them. I do not like discussing issues like that at city council chambers, as everybody knows. Um, but the most important thing is, is that you get out there and make your opinions known. Like Councillor Shambell, I know what I'm voting for or against or whatever. <laughs> And uh, I, I appreciate your sentiment on that, by the way. Yeah. And with that, I will pass. Thank you, Council Boot. Cancel out. out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, that's what I was. That's what I was Just saying. That's the reason why I think it, that's that's good. Perfect balance. <laughs> I would say it was a very memorable Halloween in Berry City. I really enjoyed handing out candy last night. Uh, I think we went through about uh, five hundred pieces. Um, on the front porch and uh, saw so many costumes. My favorite was a duck-billed platypus. Um, <laughs> but also uh, I appreciated a penguin that I saw from a nearby resident. Um, and I would remind everybody that Veterans Day is coming up on the 11th and there'll be this America ceremony um, organized by the Veterans Council. I also wanted to congratulate, I should have done it earlier, but um, I saw the Wabi Jewelers going to be celebrating their 50th year in business that's huge no small feat wow and uh so great congratulations for them to be an anchor of downtown um and uh and then really a very institution so that's exciting At last uh i echo everybody else encourage encourage everybody to, to get out and vote um i think that we i hope we have record turnout this year so and with that i'll pass um that takes us Most <laughs> nice to, uh, manager you don't need an executive session do you nope. okay. motion to adjourn second there's a motion to adjourn by council boot and a second by Councilor wazak at oh it's nine nine uh 12. 12 yeah all those in favor say aye aye, aye. all those opposed the ayes have it good night good night online